Hello, this is Professor Scott Norman at Pittsburgh State University, and today we're in the automatic transmission lab, and we have a battery lesson for our students. So uh, about two weeks ago, uh, I went out to try to start my 57 uh, Dodge truck that was in the garage. It's been sitting there for probably at least a month, and I haven't started yet. And I went to start it, and it went, Nyeh. so didn't crank over one whole time. It just went like, Nyeh. and so... You know, I'm thinking, well, I guess my battery is probably uh, dead. You know, I haven't started in a month. And so I went over and I got my, my fluke and I tested the, the voltage of the battery. And it was showing, uh, this is showing 12.43 volts. And so, you know, it was showing fairly good voltage. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird. So I hooked up my charger to it and I turned the charger on. And I know I walked away and did a couple other things that day but then i went back to it later on probably after a couple hours and i went up and i went tried to start it and went Nyeh. and i said oh wow that's kind of weird and so i i flipped my um my charger to, to the start mode for the starting assist and still nothing and i was like oh no i got a problem <laughs> because normally you know if the battery's weak it's still going to turn over uh, if you have it on the start assist and so I did a little bit of a visual inspection on it, and I, um, I, did, get, I did get an ant clamp, and, and I put an ant clamp um, uh, to the uh, cable, the battery cable, going down to the starter, this cable right here going down to the starter. And as I cranked it over, it was uh, only showing uh, 49 amps, and you know, you're looking at hopefully around above 150. And so the amperage was way low. And immediately I thought, wow, I wonder if I have high resistance somewhere in the circuit. And I could see this, this cable going down to the starter. And if you, if you take a look at it, it looks like it's the original um, cable from 1957. But there's a whole bunch of the uh, plastic off of it. And someone taped it up at some point. And, um, you know, it, it just it looks like it needed to be replaced. And I said, okay, I'm going to put new cables on it. it. It needs it anyway. Um, uh, this, uh, th this particular end of the cable was on top of the starter, which I couldn't get to very easy. So I went ahead and pulled my starter, the two bolts on the starter. There was, you know, 40 years of grease on that starter. So I figured I'd clean my starter up. I tried to do a little bit of maintenance on a different system on that uh, truck every once in a while. Well, as I had the starter out, I went ahead and I took it over to my uh, jump pack to see if the starter worked. And the starter worked just fine. And then I'm thinking, hmm. So then I, um, then I took and I, um, <coughs> excuse me, I turned the engine over and the engine turned over. I thought, well, wait, wait is the engine locked up or something? Uh, is the clutch <laughs> not the disengaging or anything like that? And so, and so I was doing all these checks and I was ignoring the battery is what I was doing. And, and, and there's a couple of reasons why I was ignoring the battery as, as a possible problem. Is that typically I would, I would yank this battery out and I would take it over to my um, 85 Jeep that shares this battery because I can't drive two vehicles at, at once. And um, I would stick it in there and see what happened. Well, it was pouring down rain that day, so I didn't want to walk outside. And the second thing is that the, um, the code on the battery says that I purchased it in um, August of, of zero or August of uh, 2020. And right now it's, uh, it's March of 21. So the battery is, you know, six months old. And so uh, I was like, did I replace that battery last August? I replaced lots of batteries. So, so again, I, I didn't remember and I didn't have a receipt, but I was, you know, I was figuring that's a new battery. And typically, you know, when you uh, try to jumpstart the battery, if it's a weak battery, the vehicle will start. So I, so I got a new cable for it. I cleaned up my starter. And then on Monday, I brought the starter and the battery into the uh, in, in the school to hook it up to the battery um, tester because I obviously <laughs> good diagnostics <laughs> is that you have to test your battery before you know you get involved in other things and so so I hooked the battery up and I did a test and it failed the test and so the results of this test are, are um, it's a 460 cold cranking amp battery but it only had a reliable uh, uh, amps of 60 amps and so you know I was only showing about 49 on my amp clamp and so so it's like wow I got a bad battery which you know <coughs> I don't run across a bad battery very often here at the school uh, as far as a brand new battery and so um, uh, and the impedance on the battery was uh, 52 
and you know we're looking at it. it's way way too high as far as the impedance on that but the reason why i'm doing this video is that is that what we did that was kind of cool with the students is that we used our uh, snap-on thermal imager and we were able to find the bad cell for on this battery so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to load the test uh, with my snap-on tester and then i'm going to try to get some good images of the um of the battery and you can actually see the actual bad cell in that Okay, so I, I, I'm load testing the battery and I'm using my thermal imager and you can see that that right in the center of that thermal imager, right at, get my hand in there, right in that spot there, you can see that there's a big heavy spot right there where it is very hot compared to everything else. And so that's where my short is at, at the battery um, on that one particular cell getting a lot hotter than the rest of it uh, during, this, um, during this battery load test. And so that one little spot is what's causing this battery to fail. Starting it's uh, it's a shorted out. The test that we just did with this uh, this next test is again I got um, uh, 46 cold cranking amps and the impedance is uh, 68 uh, mega ohms, which again is, uh, is very high. So the moral of the story, students, is to obviously always uh, test your battery before you get involved with uh, starting or charging issues. Uh, this is uh, Professor Scott Norman. And if you guys are looking for more automotive education videos, you can visit my uh, Professor Pintane YouTube channel. I'm also on Facebook. Just look for Professor Pintane. Next thing I gotta do is take my battery back to where I bought it and see if they'll uh, prorate it and give me another one. Thank you very much. Hopefully you enjoyed the video.